This is my son-in-law's EK Civic racing car, which I built for him about three years ago. I fitted this twin cam Prelude A20A4 2 litre with its 5 speed gearbox. This is a very cheap but powerful swap that I've shown in detail step by step in an earlier video on my channel here. After a year of testing and development of the car, we entered it for the event at which it had been ultimately aimed, a club rally sprint. But somebody else had other ideas. This is my delightful granddaughter Claire. She chose to come into the world precisely on our much anticipated race day. Game over. Quite rightly, the demands and overriding priorities of starting a family shelved the car. But it's time to pick things up again, isn't it sweetie? Nigel and I ran two minor dirt events last weekend to shake the car down and we did find a few problems. The alternator belt was jumping off and we had a couple of issues with the starter motor circuitry, all of which we were able to fix. Despite those problems, I was still able to win my class. Yesterday I replaced a worn out CV with a ripped boot. This car uses DC2 Integra drive shafts, CVs, uprights and the larger disc brakes of the DC2. So mechanically, this car is now ready to race. However, sitting outside on the trailer for 18 months took its toll on the chrome vinyl that we put on the car, turning it a crappy grey, so we've taken it off. I'm going to restore the car's appearance with this carbon fibre vinyl, like I did with my son's RX-7 when we completely wrapped it. Enjoy watching how I do it and see a few tricks I use to get the best results. This stuff is not cheap, so wastage needs to be minimised. Unlike plain coloured vinyl, this stuff has a grain to it, so you can't just cut pieces out and lay them in any direction. You've got to match that grain over the whole of the job. In this particular case, the shape of the previous work on the car must also be matched. Cutting out basic paper patterns and laying them out on the vinyl before I cut anything out is a first step that will address these application issues. Only one set of patterns is required because the other side is basically just a reverse pattern of the other side. Now I've got all my pieces laid out with the patterning of the grain going the right way, I can roughly cut them out. Now mark them out, all of them oversized. Now I've got most of the pieces cut out I'm almost ready to start applying the vinyl. To maximise adhesion, a clean surface is essential. And to get rid of the residue glue from the uh, old work here, I'm going to use acetone. You've got to be careful with this stuff, but it's about the only thing that will get old bits of glue off. Yeah, that goes white. trying to keep it away from the paint that's going to be showing on the car and just keep it within the areas where the striping's going to go. Now I've got a really good clean surface for the vinyl to stick onto. Just like painting, good surface preparation is essential when lying vinyl. If you've got small dents and things like that, if you put vinyl over it, the dents won't go away. They'll show through the vinyl. You can just carbog them and sand them smoothly and then lay the vinyl straight over the top of that. Most car wrapping videos show you to spray a bit of water on the car. I've tried adding detergent to, to the bottle just a little bit and it tends to cause more problems than it cures. However, to stop the vinyl sticking to itself as you pick it up, I prefer to also put a light spray of water on the vinyl itself as I take the backing off. Then if it folds over, and I have picked the windiest day of the year to do this, it won't stick to itself. Water allows you to place the vinyl on the job and to be able to move it around and position it just for you. You 
you've got to get the air bubbles out. You start in the centre of the piece that you blade. And the best tool I found for this is just a credit card. You just work the water to the edge of the job. You can see that coming out, the water coming out there. That's no air bubbles. You can see the water coming out there. Because I've got to match the edges to the old work, I'm going to cut the vinyl in position. So I'm using masking tape temporarily. To mark where the edges are going to be. And now I've got a line along which I can cut. Now I've trimmed it, place the vinyl in position by the bottom edge. Trim the edges around things like glassware and other fittings on the car. Push the vinyl right in with your square G. I've switched to a larger one than I found. And then just trim with a brand new Stanley knife. Door openings are easily dealt with. Wrap your vinyl around it. Cut it to curve as it needs. to stretch your vinyl into any grooves or curves, heat it up with a hairdryer and push it in with your spatula. To highlight the carbon fibre, I'm going to put some red pin striping around the edge.